training ground. You ask for it, you get it. You and I will rip your photos into smithereens. Hold on to your headphones. Here comes the pain. And painful it has been for the past couple of days trying to get this whole thing together. We try to do it from Napoli where I was and it was a disaster twice, so two times in a row. We gave up and I'm back home in Berlin and Matt is back where he is, which is where, you know, California and all that kind of sunny stuff. So without further ado, um, this is Training Ground. Uh, this will be the last training ground that will be uh, basically done at the same time as the, uh, the the podcast, which wasn't really the case this time, but this will be really like the last kind of, you know, same time thing, right? Yeah, it sounds like you're announcing the end of training ground. No, but it's not. It lives on, which <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a popular TV program that switches time. So just so you know, it will be mid month, mid-month, like yes. middle of the month from next yeah. time. So just so you know. Um, so deadlines are mid middle of the month as well. So just make sure that you get them in then. And training ground will live on forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Uh, this is a wheels special. I think it will be a lot of uh, pictures with wheels. And uh, Matt is going to explain what he hates and what he hates even more on this picture by Mike Green. <laughs> yeah, this is. I'm starting to resent this picture because this is the third time that I've said the same thing about it, but only the first time that anybody's going to hear it. So anyway, um, this is a good example of something that you can do at most racetracks where you can get really close to the cars or the bikes when they're not on the track. So people have been complaining that we're telling them to get close, but they can't get close because of the barricades and safety and whatever and that's very true and everybody's been through it but you can get the cars going and the bikes going from the garage to the track you can get them going from technical inspection to the garage there's lots of places where the cars are that aren't on the track and so you can get as close as Mike got here about this specific picture I mean it's a good attempt but it's just not interesting enough so you want to you know, again, be lower, be using a slower shutter speed, you know, you've, you found where something was happening, but you need to make it look interesting, and that's not what's going on here, it's just, um, you know, not, not interesting enough, but yeah. you're on the right track, so to speak, um, you know, look for these moments, but look for something that you can do with it, rather than just this. Uh, by the way, there are people who submitted um, images for training ground and that are not on this training ground. And I think the reason we suspect is that you've not set your um, what is it privacy setting? Is it privacy? Yeah, privacy. It has to be um, public, right? Public, and it has to be available to search. So I think there's a setting in there yeah. somewhere that says hide from public searches. And I get it if you have kids and you don't want people finding the pictures of your kids or whatever, that's fine. But if you want to participate in training ground, um, you got to figure it out so that your privacy settings will allow us to search for the tag uh, and make a slideshow out of it. There's no other way for us to make this work right now. And moving right along, and for the second time in a matter of a couple of days, John Valentine does rugby. Um, it's very deja vu right now, this whole situation right now, except for the fact that I'm back in home. Um, this is a, I think, I believe it's Aussie rules uh, football or rugby, as you... Uh, no, no it's which football. One it is. football. It's football. Aussie rules football with funny-looking uh, balls. So, uh, I did say last time, I will stick to what I said last time. Last time, I mean, like, the one to record a show that was never recorded. The, I like the background a lot, which I thought was very, very dis disrupting, but at the same time, I thought it was the, the patterns of the cars that were lined up worked, except for the fact there's a massive thing that is there that should have been cover covered by a car. And therefore, this background sucks, and it's very distracting now all of a sudden. I love the fences, I love everything else, but this. I know it's sunny, 
So you have to, have to, have to look for a background that is much more simple. So the eyes go directly to the players and not towards the background. Because the case is that, you know, sunny days like this, you cannot pump your, you know, F-stop to 3.5 or F4 because it's just too sunny. You just can't do it. So the only thing you can possibly do is to find a background that does, uh, that won't distract you from what's happening on the field, which is not that interesting. Just guys jumping for a ball, uh, no expression, no nothing. It's just dudes with um, muscles, muscling for balls, and that's it. So, yeah, you know, you have to just do a better job. You have to be very, 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 very aware of what's happening within the frame and make things, you know, work towards your advantage and get rid of the stuff that's really distracting from your actual picture. So that's it. When you're figuring out where to shoot from, look at what the background's going to be and then think, what's the best thing that could happen that I could get from this situation? And do I want to have that ruined by a bad background or not? So this picture, you know, there could have been anything could have happened. Or some guy could have been standing on his head and the background still would have been distracting. Mm. So at least give yourself a chance from the beginning when you're figuring out where you're going to shoot from. Um, you know, am I killing myself and any possible good thing that can happen with a bad background? Uh, and we, oof. and it's by Douglas Bolden Photography, and this is Martin True X Jr. So it's wheel special now. This is the first one up, Matt Cohen. Yeah, this picture is. There's nothing. There's nothing here that you know. I made a blog post about this a while ago. Auto racing. You know, they have thirty stops or however many stops they have, and you figure there's. 75 or 100 people that are shooting that, you multiply that by, you know, how many laps they have, and you have a lot of pictures of cars. I don't really enjoy shooting NASCAR all that much because you can't see the driver's face, and, you know, there's, unless you get a crazy wreck right in front of you, it's all going to look basically the same. The track where he made this picture is, you know, it's built into a mountainside. It's, there's a valley where they grow wine, in the background if you want it. Um, I, you know, this is somebody's driveway and this is a car sitting still. There's, there's nothing, uh, nothing interesting about it. Like the, yes, he um, got it in focus and didn't cut any part of the car off, but the bar is way higher than that. And if you're gonna be able to shoot NASCAR, which is the most popular series in the States, you got to take advantage of that and do something interesting, and especially on an interesting track, especially when there are places where even without a press pass you can get to to shoot the cars in the paddock and you know driving around to technical inspection things like that. This is a waste. This is just absolute waste of everybody's time. And this is just a typical example of really the bad kind of motorsports from what I've seen. And people get really stuck on this rut of trying to get the uh, background blurred and the cars moving or kind of moving, the wheels moving really, and get the entire car in and say, voila, I got everything in focus, everything's great. But yes, like Matt said, it's just boring. Like, what, what do you get out of this? Like, uh, you know, you do work for this, like, number 56 car? Like, well, if you do, then I guess it's an insult to them, but I'm sure they've got billions of images exactly the same thing. So got to work on it because it just sucks. It sucks. Um, this shouldn't be here. <laughs> um, we do bre Breaking Bad. We do uh, Training Ground. Um, and one of the reasons, well, not really Training Ground, like doing B, the Big Lens Fast Shutter is that we really wanted um, parents to take pictures of their kids playing sports. And there's no, you know, there's not many websites that actually tell you how to do these things. And I think it's, it's one of those things, amateur sports, we've been saying all along, you get so much better access than professional sports. And this really is, I mean, he's ballsy. I wouldn't really be there. I, I don't know how far he was. But it's a very good picture. I mean, it is, everything's in there that you want. Yeah. And it's a very, you know, and he's got the goal, which is then makes it actually an interesting picture. It's not just a you know a kid standing up and find I'm um, jumping up and finding a shot. There's a goal as well. So if you're 
you know, also it's by Wayne Lucero. And um, if you're, if you really want kind of example like how really a good sports shot is, is is that you have something like this that tells a story that you can see the stuff that's that's happening and just kind of draw your, a lot of conclusions from there, a lot of stories that go into it, and just technique in itself. He's low to the ground. He's shooting. He's actually framed it very well. Action on right kind of right hand side and action also on left hand side, and that's it. He's also got the background blurred. With so many people that you that doesn't that don't do this, he's done it, and I've got nothing really else to say about this. And it's a good shot. Anything yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't be here. I, no, it shouldn't be here. That's my but. comment. It doesn't belong. <laughs> I just wanted to pray. That's a good shot. All right, Doug again, Matt. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is the multiple car version of the picture two before. I mean, it's you know you have to ask yourself like, okay, so you got your camera in. I I don't know if he shot this under credential or if he was just in the stands shooting it. It's hard to tell because there are positions that are pretty close in the stands and there's positions that are far if you have a media credential, but. You know, this is an interesting track, like lots of things go on. It's one of the very, I think there's only two or three road courses in all of NASCAR, and this is one of them. And, you know, this, I, I, you know, I just don't know what the purpose is. What's, what, photographically, what's your purpose for taking a picture like this? There's not a crash. There's not interesting light. There's nobody doing anything superhuman. It's, you know, the, the thing about NASCAR, people call it, it's just rolling billboards. Like, the cars are the way they are, so you can fit as much advertising on them as you can. And that's the only thing that we're seeing here is the, like, you know, somebody who didn't know anything about motorsports, certainly nothing about NASCAR, would look at this and say, oh, that's really cool that Rayleigh's and Burger King and Mobile all have their own cars and their own logos really big on the cars. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but everybody who's ever seen a NASCAR picture in the history of NASCAR knows that. So, I, you know, what's the purpose? What are you taking this picture for? Why did it make it from your camera to the computer? Why did it make your make it from your computer to Flickr? And what do you get out of it when you look at this picture and say, well, this is what I'm going to do next time? Well, what are you going to do next time? What is this the starting point to? And you know, I... Like I, I just kind of like, I realized that there's these, you know, big black bandage type of things on the lights and things like that. I don't understand why then like people kind of like don't concentrate on how damaged these cars are or something, you know, like there's so many different things. Just looking at this picture, I can name a couple of things that I can do or I would actually try to do if I actually had this kind of access or if I was actually there on my own and say, okay, well, I can just really concentrate on like how beat up these cars are. Or maybe the parts of the cars lying around, like anything, anything other than just, yeah, just you know, just cars, <laughs> just 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 cars. You know, it's, it it really feels like anyone can take this, and I say it, I probably would. Yeah, I, I, I don't like, know what the difference is between this and a a point and shoot no, camera, same. or you know, really when it comes right down to it, what's the difference between this and a camera phone picture? You're not, yeah. you know, it's not dark. So the only thing that you have over a camera phone here is the, you know, that you have a bigger file size. You know, mm -hmm. I, there's not, you're not doing anything that takes, you know, anything special to do. You're, you know, you camped out at a turn and you pushed a button when things came through. And it's, yeah. you know, okay. I, right. yeah, it's just, yeah. you need to put more thought into it and you need to do, you need to take advantage of situations like the. Let me tell you something. The people that shoot at super speedways like Talladega, all they're doing is waiting for a crash or somebody to lock up their brakes or something like that. They would kill to be able to shoot at Sonoma where there's 12 turns. I guarantee you. Ask any one of them. They would tell you. I would love to shoot at a road course because there's so many different things I could do, rather than just asphalt in the background and cars and waiting for a wreck yeah. and you know so you gotta make the most of it when you're there uh, Hammer B Speedway Indian Arena Indiana Indian Arena oh it's in Stockholm I see Yend Soderblom 
I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. But there's something that really bothers me. Like, it really bothers me that it's the hands cut off for some reason. It shouldn't really bother me that much. And I like the fact that he concentrated on the guy who's probably the, the guy who's at the starting grid, uh, waiting for the whole thing to start and everything. Or, I don't know, he's kind of an official guy. I would... Hmm... I would like to have, have seen a couple more uh, writers. So maybe instead of actually having it vertical like this, you know, like portrait mode, I put my portrait, you know, composition, I kind of would love to have it in a uh, landscape and had maybe one, may, I like odd numbers with these things, so maybe three would actually be better than just one. Um, but still concentrate on still the guy, whoever's the official guy. And because, you know, I like the, the point of view that he's kind of like trying to cover himself more the, the ground that's all kicked up from the tires. It would have been very, very interesting. Um, but I think it's, you know, this is it. This is a bit of creativity creativity going on. He Jens has actually flexed his creativity muscle and, and came up with this, and I, I, I um, praise him for that. And so hopefully he'll do it again. But this time, yeah, just make sure the competition is very, very, like, done well. And hopefully a similar type of uh, situation will come back. Uh, and you can try different composition. Everything else is okay. Wheels, we turn, wheels. I shouldn't be here, no? But this is also like a, what do you think? It's a bit of a, you know, I, I'm sure like for people who've actually been shooting that these, these type of shots, it's quite common, right? Yeah, this is, um, over here they call it flat track. I don't know what they call it over there, but yeah, I mean, this is how they go into turns, but I do, I like the, I like this one much better, I, I know what he was going for, and he was trying to do something different, I just don't think it worked on the other one, on this one, I really like this for the only reason that three of the guys' heads are lined up, and the other guy's a little bit out of sync mm. with them, um, but, you know, yeah, it is, if you shot flat track, you have this shot, and, you know, that's fine, if you want to have it, but it's not, you know, I don't know, you're letting the people in the picture do all the work, and it's, you know, basically just a picture of what people do on flat tracks. I guess he could have actually composed it differently, you know, because I'm thinking, like, if, if this happened, you know, the entire race, then why yeah. go for a shot like this standard, you know? Right. Well, every time they go through this turn, this is, yeah. you know, exactly the same thing with, the, with the difference of the positioning right. of, you know, each individual one, this yeah. is what it looks like. Okay. So yes, it's a no no this one, sorry. Um moving right along. You know, it, can you go back to that one for a sec? Mm. So what I would like to see, you know, in the vein of saying something uh, you know, to what to do next time. Mm. I would like to see what it looks like from outside. You know, not with them coming at you, but you know, like move to the left a bit and get the so you can see them all, you know, this the same uh, composition basically, but so that you're getting them from behind and you're watching the dirt fly up behind you, you know, like you had in the picture before. So I would like that yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot better. You know, you're going to get a face full of dirt, but you're going to get a more interesting picture and one that most people who shoot this aren't going to go for. So, you know, if you can shoot this again, look for different angles that, that aren't so head-on you know, the, the cool thing about this is the dirt flying around. Not These guys aren't going all that fast. They're not the best riders out there. They're not, probably not um, even name guys or whatever, so it's really not all that important. So take the opportunity to make a picture that supersedes the fame of the riders and the track and all of that. Yeah, I just got, I really, I just said before, I, I would like to see a different composition. Like you can shoot from this angle, but... Make it a bit more interesting. Like, there's so many things you can do from this angle. You don't need yeah. to stick with this particular composition. Yeah. Uh, I know what this real thing. So this is by T. Lane. I have no idea where this is, but it's somewhere in America. Because it's a Wrangler. I'm producing now. The dude, the white guy, he's got some ropes, and he's trying to get this. See, now I'm thinking that this is... I'm just trying to be Matt Cole in a little bit. I'm just trying to decide like, whether or not it's actually good. I think it's okay. But I also kind of think that this might be one of those same things that Jens did, that it's quite common. So I'm going to 
you know, because this is what I shoot all the time, I'm going to say this. This is not a bad picture in any way. You've got the dirt kicking up from the horse. The you know when the cowboy catches the calf, the horse needs to stop really quickly, and a lot of times dirt's going to kick up like that. You can do some cool things with that, so it's good that it's in there. Um, the rope is in an interesting, uh, you know, the when it's coming out of his hand, it's cool that it's all coiled up like that. You can see that it's a catch because the uh, the rope is around the calf's neck, and it's a pretty good expression on the cowboy's face. So you know, as far as like a standard calf roping shot, this is fine. I'm when I, I shoot a lot of rodeo and I shoot a lot of roping, and I will have one or at the most three pictures of any one cowboy from this angle because it doesn't matter. Like, unless there's something that makes the arena special, like there's some that are really historic looking, some that just have mountains in the background or whatever that has kind of a sense of place, you any one picture of this cowboy is going to look exactly the same as any one picture of him from any other rodeo. So, yeah, have one in case somebody calls and says, we need to run this, we're doing a story on him, great. But this is the kind of thing where calf roping is real predictable and they're just going to keep doing it. There might be 60 guys who are doing this, trying to, you know, get it. This is during the day. They're trying to get into the night performance or something. And you have unlimited amounts of time of these guys doing this to try different things, panning shots, lower angle shots, different focusing, you know, f looking at the horse's legs and just getting the muscles in the dirt coming up or something like that. There are a myriad of ways to make more interesting pictures than this. So I'm not saying don't make these pictures, but don't get stuck making these pictures over and over again every rodeo that you shoot. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, and different... And I just like don't understand why people are so adamant on getting the entire action and the entire frame. I just why don't I just use it, you know go a lot closer and just constantly like one particular aspect of you know the sport that you're shooting in. Yeah, you know I I wrote about it in for team roping, but it it definitely still applies for calf roping. You know, there's nothing that says that the calf needs to be in the picture. Mm. You know, if you're shooting a cowboy, having him throwing the rope, you get it. He's calf roping. Yeah. You know, you don't need the calf in there. You don't even need the horse in there. You know, he's got a cowboy hat and a rope. He's a cowboy. And that, you have, sometimes you have to take a step back or take a step forward and figure out really what's the picture about. Well, this picture is about the cowboy throwing the rope. Unless you, you know, unless there's a real famous calf, it's more about the cowboy than it is about the calf. Ooh. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the other one, you know, the, the calf roping picture is, um, you know, is good for what it is. This isn't good for what it is. This is just, um, it's just an awkward, awkwardly framed, awkwardly colored even kind of picture. And it's, you know, you don't. Listen, I ran into all kinds of problems, people telling me, especially when I first started, you're shooting rodeo wrong because what you want is the, the mid-buck picture with the front hooves, you know, three inches off the ground and the back hooves straight up in the air. But listen, that gets just as boring as anything else does. But you also are trying to show, you know, like the power and how hard it is to do all this. And really, this picture comes down to the guy's face and he's grimacing and whatever, but it's not enough to really make it an interesting picture. Like, this horse was doing all kinds of things during this ride, trying to get this guy off, flexing his muscles, and looking like he was training. You know, if, if you get it where everything, you know, where all four hooves are on the ground and the guy looks like he's getting ready to come over the top, that's a picture. If you get it mid-buck, that's a picture. But you're kind of in no man's land right here where you can't see the saddle rein, you can't see you know, any kind of athletic ability on the cowboy, all he's doing is, like, gritting his teeth and hoping that he's going to stay on. And, you know, if he was getting bucked off, that'd be one thing, but really you're just in no man's land here. So... I'm going to tell you, Keelane, that we won't see a bit more different things from now on. Like, you're really doing this, like, one frame, one composition. Everything has to be in other thing. So really, really constant, like, one aspect of whatever you're going to be shooting next time because everything else will... Everything else is, you can get something in mid motion. You have the skills to do that. So make it a bit more interesting. It's really complicated. 
terrible don't shoot don't shoot rodeo like other people shoot rodeo shoot it what you see be where you want to be um, you know those two pictures that's what people are trying to do all the time and you need to break out of that you just you know, they, I know what's at the end of it. I see these guys every weekend, and they're making the same pictures they've made for 20 years, and you don't want to be that person. And this one's a bit better now because I like the whole background going on and people, like, looking at the whole thing. It's good, but I'm just going to move on a bit more, something different. Yeah, same thing, you know? It's the same thing over and over and over. Like... I guess, you know, like Matt started, like Matt said, if you started doing this just now and being able to actually get these things in focus is a very, very big deal for you and everything, but now that you can do this, you've got to really start moving on and try to start doing interesting stuff because it really is interesting. Like, I'm bored now. Looking at and, and here's, you know, here, like we were talking about in one of the first couple of pictures, so you're standing somewhere and every picture, more or less, depending on what the calf does, that... Uh, that pole is going to be in the background. Well, that pole is not helping the picture. So, you know, if you moved, uh, you know, to the right or the left and got him in between those poles, that would be one thing. Or, you know, if you tried to move the poles out so the only one that you could see was the one that's really far away and out of focus, that's another thing. But if you're going to sit here and shoot the whole rodeo, that pole is going to be in every single picture that you make, and that's not good. And this watermark should go. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea what that is. Isaac, for uh, somewhere in the ocean, there's nothing going on. There's just nothing. There's nothing going on. That's interesting over here. No, what? It's not like you're like the boat is in the middle of the ocean with waves coming by and water everywhere. There's nothing going on. So. If there's nothing going on, there's nothing to shoot, really. Unless you create something that's interesting out of nothing. We've not created anything out of this, so there's nothing. It's, it's a crappy hole. Like it should why it shouldn't even just be anywhere, it should be in garbage. Like immediately gone, gone, gone. I I think that this picture is light away from being halfway decent. Like, yeah, there's not that much going on, but seeing that, you know, the composition of having the the, uh, the mast in the middle and the the lines coming in on the right hand side and the guy working on the bottom you know there there's the beginnings of a composition there but the problem is that it's backlit but you're not getting any of the benefit of that you're not getting the halos you're not getting um, you know a cool sky or whatever I guess because it was midday but you know if you had a, a crazy sunset going on behind this would be a lot better picture okay yeah, it's one of those things again, huh? It's like that that wheel in um in the races that kind of popped up at a curve or something, right? Same thing. Right, it's the same as the motorcycle thing. picture. It's mm. the same as the NASCAR picture. This is what these boats do during mm. the race, and you know, it sucks that you can't get or you know, in this situation, you couldn't get closer to it or whatever. But that doesn't mean that you get points still from shooting it from the shore and having it be too far away. It's just too far away. You know, if you can't get out there, then you need to figure out how to make the picture look as interesting as if you were out there, and this doesn't get that done. No. Not at all. Um, it shouldn't be here, I think. I think it's, it's yeah. a good photo. It's, yeah. it's, it's a good photo, so it shouldn't be here uh, not far now. So you should put it into Podium. Um, you could have put it into... Uh, yeah, I can see some wheels there. <laughs> yeah, wheels it is. Mark Fletcher. Now. Now, why? Okay, there are a couple of things immediately should not be there. That thing, plastic thing, should not be there. You are here in this area. Why does this have to be there? You can turn your camera a little bit to the right and they'll be gone. It'll be just completely gone. Unless... Your main focus is the girl behind this girl in the front, which I doubt, highly, highly doubt it. It's just photography, sports photography 101. Just move your body, and move your. Well, camera. even if it was the second, even if it was the second girl, he still could have been on the other side of the pole. He could have, but he didn't. 
person. Yeah. You know, it's this problem. Yeah, you're just, you know, you're screwing yourself before the picture's even made. Yeah. And, you, you know, that's the easiest kind of thing is look around what could be a problem and what can help me. And, you know, do that before you take the picture because after it's going to be too late. Yeah. And, and if it's, you know, if you do this and then you look at your camera while you're shooting and you see, oh, the pole is screwing me, then you move, you know. But if you wait until you get home, then you might have a whole day's worth of pictures that look like this, and that's not helping anybody. Like, even my Photoshop technique can't actually get rid of this humongous thing <laughs> over here. Oh, gosh. Eric. <laughs> All right. Eric. It's just the, just the same thing. There's just nothing there, you know. Like, you have to see this. And say, okay, what what am I supposed to see? Like, there's nothing to see here. The sports photography isn't just about catching action. Sports photography is catching action, or yeah, catching action and making it into an actual beautiful photograph. That's what it is. We're here to get you out of. I mean, this like it's compositionally, it's it's not a very very good. There's nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, I so, you know I I don't. We we've seen a couple of the other attempts that were similar to this, and I'm I'm more sympathetic to this I think than you are because, I you know I like the effort I liked it, even though it's not a great picture it's still showing people something that from an angle that they don't ordinarily get to see and I don't mind that it's in practice because you can't really do this during a game but sure sure it's sure. also there's two problems that even if you even if Ryu and I agree to disagree about whether or not the subject is worthy of making the effort. Okay, let's. We're, we're going to agree for the purposes of this to disagree. You still have three problems. First of all, that the lighting is bad, right? And we talked about this on the other one. You need to, if you really want this picture, then you're going to have to use strobes because you're shooting with the light on the side, but not enough to really, you know, bring out the face, and it's not enough to make a silhouette, which wouldn't really be all that good anyway. No. So you have an exposure problem that really can only be controlled with light, either a reflector or a flash or something. The other thing is the people that are stretching on the left edge and then you have somebody's shoes and bag or something like that on the right hand side. Those are things that you need to notice just like we were talking about that pole in the last picture and the pole in the roping picture. You need to notice those things before and so this is practice. Just walk over there and grab that shit and move it and then compose around the people who are stretching on the left edge. But you need to control your situation better, either by sitting in a different place where there's a cleaner background or moving that away because it's always going to be distracting. You know, those cones aren't helping in the bag and the people who are stretching. You can't move the people that are stretching. You can probably move all the rest of it. So you got to do that or else you're just behind the eight ball by the time the picture is even taken. And the fact that there's nothing happening, like, you know, I do a lot of weird compositions, and I have, like, photos that have very big foreground with nothing there. But I really try to think if that works or not. And this is just really randomly taken with the subject being almost in the middle, slightly to the left, and the foreground with nothing that adds to the actual subject. So it's just a no-no. And like Matt said, like, stuff that's actually going in the background that shouldn't be there, should do. And you can move. You got feet. You got to move, and you got to get into a better position. It's a shame because you got a good at you know, good access. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it should be here. No, I just just that's a good shot. Should not be here? So, Alan Norfleet, I don't know where you're from. Podium, maybe you know. Yeah. Yeah. Less interesting, I think, but. It's nothing. There's nothing to fault about this, you know. It's one. Yeah, you shots. also you have to be careful um, when you're shooting where there's like a indirect, like a lot of indirect light. I can't really tell if this is inside or outside, but the that guy's arm shouldn't be the color that it is, and his face shouldn't be the color that it is. So you need to keep that in mind when you're shooting, and certainly in post processing, like unless you're doing it on purpose. You want skin tone to look like skin tone, and you know sometimes that's harder than other times. I know that, you know, you unless you're pretty good at Photoshop or whatever, you it's difficult to change just one tone without, I don't know, changing the rest of them or something. But mm. this 
this is it's always going to be distracting because the skin is like red, you know, dark pink or something like that. So no, I just got yeah. like the thing is like I'm going to be shooting the World Swing Championship starting next week Monday for two, almost two weeks. Um, already getting a headache thinking that I'm going to be <laughs> doing this water thing for two weeks. So I will see because I'm absolutely sure I'm going to get shots like this like billion times. So I'm really going to say it right now it's fine, but. It's boring. And boring is bad in my in my world. So it's good, but it's just boring. Um, it's the subject matter is a subject matter. This is you know like Special Olympics type of stuff. So, but if I see this, I have no idea if they're playing sports or not. Right? I I don't know what they they could just be like running around. With the well, that right. Let's, no, let's be fair. No, they don't. They don't have feet guards like that if they're not playing sports. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, but it's the same thing that things have to be happening in the, the entire frame, and all I see is that it's blurry, and there's you know this guy with the wheelchair, and that's it. Yeah, this is. So how am it's I supposed just to panning do? practice. That's yeah. all. So this is not a sports picture unless there's something sports going on. So Eric. I understand this is a subject matter, subject matter, but it also has to be, if you're playing sports, you have to show us what kind of sports or what, like, just show us, like, if there's a sports going on. If it isn't, then it really isn't sports photography. That's all I'm, all I'm saying, you know? So I hope I'm not being too, like, weirdly harsh about it, but I want to see something sports about it. So, please. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, Chris we, we really, we Chris has been, I thought, further along the line than this. Um, but you know, everything we've said about the other race car shots mm. applies to this. This is disappointing. Okay. Uh, ooh, not even same focus, is it? Uh, doesn't matter. No, bad. I mean, we love you, Chris, but you know you gotta show us some good. See, but this shouldn't be here, no, really. No, uh, no, it's great, Jimmy. It's a yeah. great, great shot. It yeah. should be in podium. Yeah. Not in focus, Jimmy. What's going? On? <laughs> I don't get it. No. How does a person who take wait, 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 this shot? Which is creative, well executed. Everything is done absolutely perfectly. Go get this. I think he's trying to do something di different, right? I understand that, right? Yeah, it's not that it's out of focus. I think it's motion blur. It doesn't focus. I think the hand, right, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did. Yeah, say, it's just. Yeah, yeah it's. Yeah. I mean, it's not good. Just... Uh, no, this is J Rash. This is not Jimmy. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. It's the same guy. Yeah. I it's the same guy as the song album. Yeah. No, no, I understand, I understand, but that's J Rash. He's been actually yeah. doing this for a long time. Um, yeah. we don't really mind. Like we if you're trying something new, it's fine. Do it. And but I want to know what the intention was for this. I think you just really wanted to do really, really specific things, just hand in a ball. But that doesn't really work in this context. Because there's nothing really interesting going on, even though they're only hands, three hands, and a ball. There's nothing interesting going. So you have to think about it again. Maybe try different composition. You know, always, 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 always different composition that could be done for a shot like this. Um, it just has to be because the, now it's just three hands of ball. That that's it. It's not like you know two girls, one cup, but it's just three hands and ball and. There's nothing more to say about this because there's also something weird by the film. I'm sure it's very dark. So I'll give you that. Um, wow. Sean Power, Up the Creek Triathlon. Matt Cohen. Yeah, it's the same as the NASCAR ones. There's just, this is not interesting. There's nothing, you know, you might know the backstory of this woman and all the adversity that she's overcome and how hard this is and whatever, but none of that stuff comes through in this picture. Yeah. This is a woman riding a bike, and that's it. I mean, the, the only thing that you've done here is been in a position where something was going on and pushed a button. There's no 
there's nothing, there's no benefit to this picture. I don't know. Um, I, don't, I really don't know where to tell you where to go from here because this is, again, this is a camera phone picture. There's nothing that you couldn't have done here with, without a, you know, or that you couldn't have done with a good camera phone. Yeah. Other than have a big file size, you have a snapshot. Yeah, shouldn't be here this one as well. Um, I really have got nothing. I mean, it's, it's a good action shot, you know? That's it. So, Adam Butler, I'd like to see you, you know, like more of your stuff in Podium or UN or whatnot because you can do this. But hopefully, the other photos that you do are asked for the seats because you might have just gotten lucky. It's open, close, like the new. Right in the back. Good. Yeah. Good. Shouldn't be here. So Brennan shouldn't be here. This should be in Podium or it should be in UN or whatever else. Just not here. Wow. <laughs> uh, Sleevio. So I ask you, where is the focus? I'm assuming it's around here. It's a bit of motion blur as well, is what it is. It's very slow shutter speed, huh? In a in a way, no. But this yeah. Thing. yeah. I think he was trying to concentrate on feet and everything, and that's fine. But the feet should be in focus because that's what he's trying to go for. Distracting stuff on the left, then it's just not a good shot altogether because the feet that you want us to see are not in focus. Yeah, it's it's you know the funny thing is that if you mentally erase the let the you know the other legs and the guy who's laying down, it becomes more of an interesting picture, but it's still out of focus. Yeah, um, yeah they that's that's basics. You gotta gotta get that stuff in focus. Yeah, it wouldn't have helped in this situation, but that's no. that's a minimum. No, we that's nothing. We don't have to comment on that. Hmm. So. Tim Sermon, Matt Cohen, black and white. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm. You know, I'm not a big fan of black and white action pictures, but I will say, I will say that it's a really, really old car, and that if this, if this wasn't as crisp as it was, you could say, oh, look, that's an old film picture. You know, yeah. you you could have made it. Had you used a different preset or used one of the software that does film grain or something like that, you could have made this in, indistinguishable from an actual old film picture, and that probably would have been cooler. Um, as it is, it's, you know, I don't know. I like the tones. I like the fact that the car is almost completely black against the track that's a lighter gray. Um, you know, the, the painting was right on, maybe not fast enough because... You can kind of see the heads, but not really, and it's a little bit distracting. the the other The other picture is far better than this. I just kind of think that with racing photos, it's like you're stuck in in a country where there's really hot women, there's really ugly women, that's just nothing in the It was really, really good, yeah. or it was really bad. And in most cases, like I really have never seen that many racing shots. I thought, wow, that is fantastic. And if I have to group this one in, it will be towards the lower end of the thing because it's obviously, you know, you kind of like add a bit of nostalgia in there, but that's about it. You know, like, you have to. It's it's what I t told my mom a couple of years ago. She went to India and she took all these pictures of kids with um, wearing very colorful saris. So they're, you know, visually very, very stunning because the colors jump at you. But... I told her, like, there's just a bunch of kids, but that's it. There's nothing more to it. Yeah, it's exotic, yes, because I don't live in India. She doesn't live in India. She just went there for a whole day, and she saw this, and, you know, she thought it was a good thing, and she took it. And a lot of people would say, if, if that's on Flickr, and say, wow, it's great, lively colors, and all this, but that's it. You have to take that out of the whole thing that you are a photographer. You're there to create something. If you're just there taking something like this and making a black and white, say, oh, look, I just kind of changed all this. So it looks like, you know, it's an old car. And it's like it's really, like, it just kind of, like, went back, like, 56 years ago. I'm like, look, it's, it's exactly like that. To me, like, there's nothing, nothing really photographic you're doing. You're only doing is just, I don't know, like, just taking something and that's it. 
There's yeah, no to, thought and composition or anything that's involved in the whole process. You know? Yeah, to expand on that a little bit, and and also, you know, the the thing about the colorful saris. So you have, and I've written about this also. There's pictures where you're making them, where you're turning chicken sal or chicken shit into chicken salad or whatever it is. Or there's situations <laughs> there where there there's situations that yeah, I think that's how it goes. Anyway, um, you. So, you, so you're either making something out of nothing, or you're taking what's there and making it what it is. And so if you're letting the subject of the picture do all the work, like your mother taking pictures of kids doing absolutely nothing in colorful saris, they need to be the most colorful saris that anyone's ever seen. And it's the same thing for these pictures. If, if all you're doing is you're there and you figured out what the exposure is and the focus point, whatever, and then you're just taking what they're giving you, what they're giving you needs to be awesome. And what we've seen in a lot of these pictures is that it's not. So you're not adding enough compositionally, technique-wise, access-wise, hard work and, you know, laying down in, you know, the mud or whatever. If you're not adding all of that, then you're expecting the subject of the picture to do all the work. That subject better be amazing. And when it's not, you end up with a boring picture, which is basically where we are here. You're, this picture, the only thing that's going on is that it's an old car and he managed to get it in focus. Not old enough, not doing anything crazy enough. So who's doing the lifting? Who's getting this picture past people's attention spans? And the answer for this and a lot of the other pictures we've seen is nobody. By the way, I like to... Uh... A uh, happy anniversary to my wife, who is now in bed. It's her third wedding anniversary today. And uh, it's dedication. Yeah, that's dedication. You will not see me doing big lens fast shutter stuff on my anniversary. I don't know. We just did the we did the dinner. No, but it's not a really big deal. I, I think I told you this. No, it's not a really big deal for us. Whole I mean, it is. Yeah, but I, deal. yeah, I would not be able to get away with that. Yeah, you know, nor, nor would I want to. No, that's all right. It's a third one. You know. Uh, Michael Mozart. Um, it's fine, but like it's just. Uh, the color is weird. There's really, I have no. I think I have no idea why this is that particular color. The dude in the background is really distracting the whole thing, and the action in itself is okay because it doesn't happen as often as people think. These type of things, it's not, not very easy to do because you don't know when they're going to attack or when well, you do, but you never get a shot that is worth really taking for anything, really. So it's okay. Um, but you have to be careful with people in the background, like I said. And if you can get an action shot like this, it's something that you should really start considering getting a bit more creative. Uh, stepping your game up a bit and yeah, showing us a bit more because it's like you know graduation. You can if you can do a particular shot for a particular sport, you can get that. Then your main focus should be to say, okay, what else can I do with this sport and or with the equipment that I have with this sport? Can I change angles? Can I do different composition? Can I do different light? Can I do blah 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 blah? All these things. So, Michael, what we're asking you to do is do something a bit more different now that you can do this. Yeah. And there you go, because you can do this. You know, you need to do more stuff now, something more different. And think about it, think about it really, really hard. And it's going to be a difficult process because once you get to a certain level, it's like learning languages, you know. You get to a certain level of languages very, very quickly because, you know, your brain sucks up a lot of these basic stuff very, very fast. But after a certain point, you have to really rack your brain to come up with different type of ideas and you have to execute them. And now it's going to be a point for you to start thinking about different things you can do with football. Because I'm always at that point all the time trying to think of something different. Uh, lacrosse. Royal Boys, Kevin Deadwilier, Matt Cohen. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's kicking the ball. Uh, I, I think we I should know. give him a bit more praise. This is what you saw 
last time. It's right? better, yeah. Actually, yeah, now I remember it is better yeah. than than what we saw before, and there's no crazy watermark on it, which we appreciate. Um, I It looks like he jacked up the saturation. I don't think that the yeah, blue really jersey is really yeah. that blue, and so you have to not go crazy with the um, adjustments to it because... It, believe me, it's distracting. Like, you have the red and the blue channels are almost pegged um, to the point where you can't tell the individual pixels apart, which isn't really good. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I You know, I get that kicking isn't a giant part of lacrosse, but it happens, and so you, you have that. But it's, you know, if this picture had been, you know, a bunch of sticks going for the ball and the one guy kicking the ball away, that would if the kicking was most of the picture, then you would have something, but it's just a tiny little detail of what's basically just a lacrosse picture. Yeah. So better, 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 better. But, Kevin, you have to start looking for better moments that are interesting, and this isn't interesting because this, it just isn't interesting. Things cut off at the top, not good as well. Um, and same thing. You're trying to get everything in the entire frame. And that's not a good thing. If it's not the case, then maybe you just concentrate on the feet. Maybe you just concentrate on the, the uh, upper body. Or maybe you just concentrate on the head. You can do that. You don't have to put everything in there all the time. Uh, Kevin did while you same thing. Uh, ankles going, but it's just not that like, interesting. Like I don't. I'm sure. I've never shot lacrosse, but I'm sure there's other things that happen besides. Just people battling for the ball, right? It has to be. Yeah. It really, really has to be something interesting that's happening. And yeah, this is not this is not even as good as the one before. Yeah. So. But Kevin, you're moving in the right direction. So we tell you we tell you horrible things, but it's it's going to be better. The pain will subside hopefully soon. But uh, yeah, look for better moments. Really, you know. Maybe you can just like take a bit of a break for like looking through the lens and say, just look at you know, just at the house. Look across the quarters, whatever. What periods. You remember? No. Uh, no, it's been a while. Okay, whatever. House court and just like take like ten minutes and look for interesting moments. And then you can decide, okay, I'm gonna shoot this mo these moments and I'll concentrate on that for the rest of the game. Then you're really, really locked on on those moments. Just forget the rest. It just doesn't really, like, just don't save your fingers, no? And just like wait for the action to come towards you and wait for the moment and you can get better, hopefully, results. Barber, Wesley. Yeah, shouldn't be here, no? Adam Butler. Should not be here. But like I said, uh, Adam Butler, same thing. That if you can do this, then show us something. I, I want you to really, really push yourself next time for the next match you're going to shoot, and show us something more. Because what now you, yeah, I mean, what happened after? You know, these guys had a pretty bad collision. Um, is one of them pissed? Did one of them get really hurt? Um, you know, did the teams come face to face or whatever? Like, you have to be, you have to stay with it. And when when there's big collisions like this, tempers flare, and you want to be able to get that too. But I'm sure it wasn't as good as when he got here. And I can't say the same thing for uh, CVO because it's uh, maybe something wrong with his camera. No, I don't know. Horribly out of focus. It's just me. No, the face is in focus. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't really yeah. have a specific problem with this picture. Okay. Cool story. Um. Okay. Maybe I just did. Maybe that's something wrong with me. No, the other one was definitely out of focus. Oh, wait, this did one I just, just... do? Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, I saw it just one. Um, sorry. Comments? Yeah, I, you know, I, I just don't mind this. It's It should be tighter because the background's not helping, but I like the way he's looking up and the sun's hitting him right in the face. Um, you know, we, there's worse pictures in this. I'm okay with this one as well. Yeah. Um, same thing. Same thing. Uh, better composition. I just, I, I just kind of want to see just nothing that don't get stuck on like things, putting things in the center all the time. It's not, not a good thing. 
Uh, Northwest Diego Mola. I'm also kind of starting to think these type of things happen all the time, right? Yeah. And so now that he's actually done this, he should do something else, right? Yeah, I'm I'm bored. I'm bored of these. Uh, you know, they're. It's great. You oh, know, these yeah, yeah. these. These tracks are, um, you know, not your standard oval tracks, and there's hills and other things going on in the background, and uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm not seeing uh, him taking advantage of the tracks and and what's going on. Like, yeah, these these bikes are really cool, and they go very fast and can accelerate and go through turns and do wheelies and all that. But I don't know. You got to make something more out of it than this. Mm. And this is. It's just not that interesting. Boring. Yeah. Um. Ignacio. So, all of a sudden, I you know what, man, you should do this because I think you need to say something positive and negative. Uh, yeah. I mean, Ignacio is a really good photographer, and I don't know what's going on here. This this is not um. He has far, far better pictures than this. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's nice that his face is partially covered, but it's still in focus. But it's not enough. Definitely yeah. not enough. Um, you know, red sweatshirt in the background is hurting. And, you know, the I don't know. This is not good. Not his normal stuff. And I don't know, I, it's not like you could say, oh, well, he was trying this and he just missed or something. I really have no idea what he was trying. No, I don't know any other. I mean, well, he liked the fact that the, um, the ball is obscuring part of his face. That's probably why he chose this, but it's not. Yeah, it's not enough. Thing. Yeah, not enough. It's crap. Better. Yeah. Chris Gouge. Yeah. But not good. And, no, we're going to do something with that. Um... Can you do something better? I don't know. I'm just kind of getting to a point with like these motorsport pictures that there's maybe just not isn't much you can really do. You know, there you know there there is, and you know we talked about it before. It's like you can make motorsport pictures where the car isn't on the track, and this one, I, you know, I would really like this picture if he had a better a lower angle on it and less of the car was in view. You know, like, just say that the edge of the door and then the window were in view and you could kind of see the guy's face or whatever, but this angle isn't all that interesting. So really all you have is a panning picture. Not enough of the car is obscured to make that part of it interesting, so... You need to also clean your sensor as well. It's a bit dirty. Yeah. Um, yeah, also... you know, when you... The, the more you stop down, this is why having neutral density filters is, is good. Um, so you won't have to stop down as much. So the amount of dust that you'll see if you shoot at 2.8, you'll see probably none. But if you shoot at f22, you'll see all of it. And if you should be shooting at f22, but you have a four-stop neutral density filter, um, you might get into the zone where the dust isn't that big of a deal. But uh, you know that you should be able to clean your own sensor. That's kind of a thing that goes along with having digital camera. And if you can't afford a neutral density filter, it's right to not leaving your case, and maybe he'll be very happy to buy you maybe four or five of them. <laughs> um, I think it's like the also the other thing that I would like to tell Chris is that I'm just a bit sick and tired of actually seeing the same conference in order. Just don't put things in the center. Just don't, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't have to pan on straightaways all the time. You can pan in, in corners. It's harder, but the payoff is much better. Thing. It's like, you know, the, the, the wheels are, okay, just, just please stop, like, it's like, it's, I don't know what it is that, that people are so obsessed about these particular things, and they just have to repeat it, like, it's like, it's like, I'll tell, like, you, I'll you, tell you why, because, because unless you're trying to make pictures, if you're just sitting there trying to, you know, push the button when something goes by you, not that much happens, you're basically waiting for a crash. And this is halfway to a crash, you know. That's that's what it is. But 
it's not enough. It's not enough to be interesting. It's not a really? good background. You know, it's not the car isn't really high off the ground. It's just the tires are barely off the ground, and it's not. It's never going to be interesting enough. Like I, I don't know what could have happened at this corner that would have been interesting, but this isn't it. And you know, so unless you're sitting on a crash, which is going to happen how many times? You're just setting yourself up for failure. I'm just going to like watch, like or look at like you know our group's um, motorsports pictures if I can never go to sleep. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna look at them. And yeah. I just, like bore myself to sleep. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. And it, it, it doesn't do. I mean, you got this is a great opportunity to like shoot a Formula One car from like 19 was the 80s probably. Like they had like these really yeah. funky like. Yeah. Really? This is all you can get? Like, I just yeah. it blows my mind. I, it's the only thing you can get. I mean, it's, it's. I'm sure it's not very, very often you get a C car like this on track, nonetheless. And it's the only thing you can get. Crappy background. I don't know where, you're sh like, what you're shooting here. Like, it's just shooting from, like, the ass. And um, that's not good. I just don't understand. And there's no point of this being in a slant like this. It should be straight because you're not, not you're not doing it to make things better. There's nothing going on here, you know, and and it really hurts me that you're not really thinking about it, like what to do and what can you do with the opportunity like this, and just in general, like what you want to shoot. And I don't know, like it's, 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 the, the fucking thing has six wheels. I mean, take advantage of it, you know, like it's. It costs you in the wheels. Like that's the whole big thing. Like, um, is that it? Is that my last match? No, it's not. Yeah. I'm Nigel Bryan, Edmund de Rothschild. Don't. What is that? Somewhere. Yeah, it's okay. just you know, it's just another. You know, shooting these boats. It's like shooting surfing. Unless you're in the water, you're going to have to work really hard. And this isn't working really hard. This is, you know, it's just a boat in the water. I, you know, yeah, it's a halfway out of it and everything, but it's, even if it was tipping over, it's still what it is. And you're not close enough to make it interesting. This is what people see when they look from the shore at the boat. So either you either need to get out there on that, uh, whatever that inflatable boat is, or you need to make the picture interesting so that it's not how people would see it if they were just looking for the shore. Mm -hmm. All this is is like the same thing that people who were standing right next to you without a camera, this is what they would see if the boat was a little bit closer. My eyes are bleeding. And this 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 thing here, what is this? You get your like your kid to like ride it on on I don't know, like on, on the street and like you took a picture of it and you scan. Yeah, not good. Oh, uh, is that it? Yep. <gasps> That's it. Um, I need to read my blurb, so if you just uh, bear with me. Um, first and foremost, thanks for watching the video. Really, really appreciate it. If you want uh, more of us reading, um, please go to biglensfashioner.com. We have other things other than uh, complaining about other people's pictures. We, are, we do positive things as well. And if you have forgotten, and I know you haven't, it is never too late to send a couple of bucks our way. Since this, Brandon Brown, and Big Lens Fashion out of the actual website, and the podcast and everything else that Matt Cohen and I do, is a 100% user-funded podcast for funded everything, please click on the PayPal donations link to show us how much you love us, and that will be available on our website. Um, yeah, you know, we keep it coming. Don't don't cry too much because we will make you cry. However, and but we will also start telling people like we did for some people like, well, this shouldn't be here. Because, I mean, this should not. It doesn't deserve to be in any of these training ground things because they're they're good. And I think your goal should be that you show us something and say, okay, you know, you don't really belong here anymore. You should go and you know, compete really for prizes, not for not for not for um, you know. Being the little class, you know. You got anything else? That? No, that's that? it. I think we're good. And we are good, and this is it, and we are gonna end our podcast.
I mean, not podcast. This is training guy. Bye. <laughs>